In this lesson, we will discuss what empirical formulas are and how to determine empirical formulas based on calculations. Empirical formulas are chemical formulas that give the simplest whole number ratio of atoms or ions that are in a compound. When we write chemical formulas for ionic compounds, we always express them as empirical formulas. We just haven't called them that yet. So in calcium oxide, instead of writing Ca2O2, we always write CaO. We're looking for the simplest ratio of ions. Now for covalent compounds or molecules, the chemical formula may or may not be empirical. In carbon dioxide, CO2, that chemical formula is empirical. It is the smallest whole number ratio of atoms possible for that molecule. However, in dinitrogen tetroxide, that is not an empirical formula because we could reduce or simplify our subscripts to get NO2. However, when we write chemical formulas for molecules, uh, we don't simplify or reduce those subscripts. So the N2O4 is actually called a molecular formula, and it does have an empirical formula of NO2, but we will talk more about molecular formulas later. For the rest of this lesson, we are going to work on uh, how to determine the empirical formula for a compound through calculations. So basically, we want to find the subscripts in our chemical formula, and they should be in the smallest whole number ratio possible. We're going to do that by comparing the number of moles of each element in the compound. And remember, uh, the mole allows us to talk about numbers of atoms, which is what subscripts are. And uh, we're going to look at basically the mole ratios between the atoms in the compound. So what does this mean? Well, in CO2, for example, um, you can look at the subscripts, one carbon atom for every two oxygen atoms, or uh, if you think along the lines of a mole ratio, one mole of carbon for every two moles of oxygen. This is what we're going to be looking for, uh, the mole ratio between the elements that make up the compound. So let's jump into a couple of examples. A compound is 80% carbon and 20% hydrogen by mass. Find the empirical formula. So we know that this compound is made of carbon and hydrogen. And with the empirical formula, we are interested in figuring out the subscripts. I'm just going to call them X and Y. Uh, they may be the same, they may be different. So to determine the empirical formula, we basically want to compare the moles of carbon to the moles of hydrogen uh, and have a mole ratio so we can determine what our subscripts are. Right now we have percents. And uh, what we can do is we can assume that we have 100 grams of the compound. You can assume any mass that you want, but 100 is easy because 80% and 20% uh, add up to 100%. So if we have 100 grams of our compound and 80% of it is carbon, that means that we have 80 grams of carbon and 20 grams of hydrogen. And we want to get these converted to moles, which we know how to do. We need our periodic tables so we can look at the molar masses. 80 grams of carbon is 2 x moles of carbon as 12.01 grams is to one mole. That's the molar mass for carbon. And we can do the same thing for hydrogen. Its molar mass is 1.01. .01. Please remember to round your molar masses to two decimal places. We get 6.66 .66 moles of carbon and 19.8 moles of hydrogen. Now these can't be our subscripts, they're not whole numbers. Our subscripts need to be whole numbers. 
So this is where the mole ratio comes in. We're going to take the larger number of moles and divide it by the smaller number of moles. That's usually a good uh, strategy to use. And when you divide this out, this should be pretty close to a whole number, give or take a little bit. And uh, basically we end up with a 3 to 1 ratio, 3 hydrogens for every 1 carbon. So now we have some whole numbers that we can use as subscripts. And our chemical formula, our empirical formula, will be C1, but we don't write the 1's, H3. And that's our final answer for our empirical formula. In the next one, we have a compound composed of only antimony and oxygen is 83.53% antimony, and we want to find the empirical formula. So um, antimony and oxygen are our two elements in our compound, and we need to figure out the subscripts for the empirical formula. So if the compound is 83.53% antimony, that must mean that the remaining 16.47% is oxygen. Again, if we assume that we have 100 grams of our compound, 83.53 grams is antimony and 16.47 grams is oxygen. Again, we're going to take these masses and convert to moles so we can look at the ratio of the moles of the elements in our compound, and then we can get our subscripts. We get 0 0.6860 moles of antimony and 1.029 moles of oxygen. We're going to take the larger one and divide by the smaller one to look at our ratio of moles. And when you divide this out, you'll find that it's not really close to a whole number. It's actually about one and a half to one. Well, we can only use whole numbers as subscripts. So if we take this ratio and we double it, we get a three to two ratio. These are numbers that we can use as subscripts. And so our final chemical formula, our empirical formula, is SB2O3. We had uh, oxygen on the top here and antimony on the bottom. And so uh, the oxygen gets the 3 and the antimony gets the 2. For the next one, eugenol is the major component in oil of clothes. It is 73.14% carbon, 7.37% hydrogen, and the remainder is oxygen. What is the empirical formula for eugenol? So we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen as the elements in our compound. I'll always give them to you in the correct order, so just follow the order of the elements in the problem. We need to figure out what the subscripts are to get our empirical formula. So this time we have three elements that we're going to deal with. We're still going to assume we have 100 grams of the compound, and then our percents will become our masses. There are 19.49 grams of oxygen. That's the remaining percent uh, from what's mentioned in the problem. And then we also have 73.14 grams of carbon and 7.37 grams of hydrogen. Each of these needs to be converted to moles, so we can look at the ratio of moles of numbers of particles to come up with our subscripts. Um, now, when we want to do our mole ratios, we're going to still divide by the smallest, but we're going to have to do this twice. Divide by the moles of oxygen uh, for the carbon and the hydrogen. You'll get a 5 to 1 ratio and a 6 to 1 ratio, whole numbers. So then when we go to write our empirical formula, we can use these whole numbers as our subscripts. We're going to get C5, because it's 5 carbons for every 1 oxygen. 
H6, because it's six hydrogens for every one oxygen, and then just O, and we don't write the one as the subscript. And finally, gallium oxide, GAXOY, forms when gallium is combined with oxygen. Suppose you allow 1.25 grams of gallium to react with oxygen and obtain 1.68 grams of gallium oxide. What is the empirical formula of the product? Well, here we don't have percents. We have masses. So we're, we're in a good place to start with. However, we have 1.25 grams of gallium, and then we would also need to find the empirical formula are grams of oxygen. And it's not 1.68 grams. That is the mass of the compound. If we subtract off the mass of the gallium, that actually, though, will give us the mass of the oxygen in the compound. Now we need to convert the mass of each element to moles so we can compare the number of moles and come up with the subscripts. Gallium gives us 0 0.0179 moles of gallium and oxygen gives us 0 0.027 moles of oxygen. Now we're going to take the larger and divide by the smaller. That does not give us a whole number ratio. It's a 1.5 to 1 ratio again. So we're going to double that to give us a whole number ratio. 3 to 2 and it's three oxygens for every two galliums. So GA2O3 is our empirical formula. Now you hopefully know how to determine an empirical formula through calculations. If not, please go back and rewatch this video.